Maritime Made is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc. Helping to educate, inform, and celebrate our region's manufacturing successes. Because great things are happening in all of our communities. In North Sydney, Cape Breton, Copal International is making flexible plastic film that is completely recyclable and helps reduce food waste by keeping your vegetables fresh for weeks. The film is produced on one of four different extruder lines and is shipped all over North America. The raw material for the film is polypropylene resin pellets. They're delivered by truck and blown into silos. From the silos, they're fed through overhead pipes into the production area. Before production can begin, the extruder line is programmed and manually set up for each custom order. The die is cleaned before each new job starts. A rope is used to thread the line as production begins. The first bit of the production run won't be delivered to the customer, but will be ground back down to be used again. The casting station is moved into place under the die and the film begins to feed through the line. Back at the beginning of the line, each of the silos supplies a different resin to the extruder line. Some resins are used in smaller amounts and they're supplied from large storage boxes downstairs. Different combinations of resins are used to create custom films. Inside the extruders, the pellets undergo heat and pressure. Inside the long barrel, a screw turns to blend the molten resin and any additives. Additives are things like slip and anti-block. The slip additive enables the film to slide in bag making machinery and the anti-block prevents the film in the finished rolls from sticking together. The extruder line can make a five layer film. The layers flow into the feed block and then into a flat die to produce a thin, clear film. Here, the film is cast onto a large metal chill roll, producing the cast polypropylene film. Then it goes on to a secondary chill roll to be stabilized and annealed. An air pinner and a static pinner help keep the film on the chill roll. Sensors on a nuclear gauge measure the film and send feedback on the thickness and flatness to the computer controls. Die bolts are manually adjusted by the technicians to ensure the film meets specifications. The die bolts control the flatness of the film and are adjusted as the production run begins until the gauge reports that the film meets the profile perfectly. Then the extruder line is set to run automatically. Copal can produce film in varying thicknesses from 20 to 200 microns. Along the line, the edges of the film are trimmed. This trim line is fed through suction to a grinder, where it is ground up and returned to the beginning of the production line. Next, the film is treated at the Corona Treater Station. The treatment increases the surface energy of the film to allow for printing ink or any adhesives to stick to it. Otherwise, the film would be much too smooth. The purple light is the static discharge of the treater. The last step on the extruder line is the winder. Here, the film is loosely wound on steel cores. The roll coming off the extruder line weighs about 1,000 pounds. It automatically rotates forward and comes to a stop. A mechanical arm pulls the roll further forward. Here, a sample is cut from the roll for testing. And the roll is labeled. A red line is made with a marker to show which side of the film is treated for printing. Arms move the roll onto a cart. 
which rolls forward to where it's lifted by a hoist onto a cart. For the next 48 hours, the film will continue to cure. After curing, it's on to the slitting department. Here, the cured production is loaded onto a slitter machine. The film moves across a series of rollers to reach the right tension. Any final edge trimming that's required for the customer is done here. While the film is being wound onto the final roll, the roll is lifted with a hoist onto a table where it's wrapped in plastic for shipping. If a client needs their film to be perforated, the film is run through a hot needle perforator machine. Here the film runs under a pin roller where the pins barely touch the surface and burn tiny holes in the film. The film anneals around the hole so it won't tear. Shipping packaging is custom designed to each customer's preference. This is a suspension crate, which ensures that no part of the roll is taking the weight of the whole roll. These are cradle packed, four to a crate. These pelletized packs hold two rolls in a cradle pack. No plastic film is wasted in the plant. Any extra film from trimming, startup rolls, or from any production problems is recycled right on site using this reverse system. The unused film is loaded onto the line and fed into grinders. Here it's ground into what they call fluff. The fluff is sucked up through pipes to a belt that feeds the fluff into a small extruder. Here it's melted and pushed through a die where a rotary blade cuts it into pellets. Referred to as reprocessed plastic, Eventually, it's cooled in water. These move along a belt where they drop down to be dried and then blown into a storage bin, ready to be used in production. The workers manage the different types of film in the recycling line to ensure the pellets will work with recipes for the main production line.